Chapter 13. He rode to Helen's apartment for the first time in a very long time. She was evidently doing very well. She stood up from the curb and hollered while he revved the engine. Then he took the back foot pedals down for her. She got on, then guided him to a store on the way downtown and took his hand and pulled him through the revolving door with her and showed him nylon sweatpants with white stripes down either leg they both could wear and inexpensive. There was a tiger stretched out where the pants met the hip, reminiscent of the 80s alligator. She knew his taste like few others. Just like old times, she said, swinging the bag with two new pairs of pants in it. Yeah, like old times. Do you think it's corny we always bought the same clothes? No. Sure? So long as the colors are different, he said. If anything, it's a turn-on, wearing the same clothes as you. They cruised down to the river, parked and waited for traffic to cross to get some lunch, then sat on a marble bench outside with styrofoam bowls filled with the dirty window restaurant's awful homemade gumbo and etouffee. Consistency of applesauce! The marble was ungiving and cold beneath them. A man took them for tourists and tried to sell them the onion. He realized deep down he was angry at her, and there was nothing he could do. They always got drunk together when they had been a thing. They found holes in the walls and got wasted. The breakup was natural, but so crushing. He had cried nights. He had given her his all. Being hurt like that, even in a natural falling apart, can cause a man to never trust again. Her thin light blue v-neck sweater turned him on, and she took it off to his protest. She had met him for lunch because she wanted to talk to someone about what was on her mind, but when he saw and asked, she said, I can't talk about it. You wanted to tell me something, didn't you? I just want to eat lunch and not think. Then she realized he was angry and they talked about that and started to fight. She turned her back on him, looked up to the sky and began to cry. She was dressed all in white and he had hurt her. She refused to go home with him and refused to tell him what was on her mind for he had tested her and she had failed. All the painful memories the motorcycle ride had relieved them of flooded in, and he walked away while her back was turned toward the river in a building that was now changed, no longer transparent, but blue against a white sky. In his breast pocket was her silver cigarette case with her naturals tucked behind the elastic within. He held it for her since they broke up in a small box in his closet and wasn't sure whether he had asked for it or she had asked him to hold it, just that the silver case was the last possession left over of hers.